Hi, I'm here with Christy Pambianke. She is head of HR at Verizon, and she's just recently moved a bunch of people to remote work. And she's going to talk about some of the takeaways and you know things to ponder as you know for CXO leaders. Hi, Christy. How you doing? I'm great, and thanks so much for having me here with you today. And happy to talk about what we're trying to do here at Verizon in these really trying and new times for all of us. So, so let's start at the top. How many folks did you have to remove move to be remote workers in in the last two weeks or so? This is really like unbelievable. We had we have 135,000 employees worldwide. Before we got into the coronavirus crisis response mechanism, we only had about 4,000 people that were our home-based agents working from a home environment. And over the last you know, 10 days or so now, we've moved over 110,000 of our employees to be in a work-at-home setup. So this has been just a shift of you know, monumental proportions that I think if we asked ourselves 10 days ago, we wouldn't have thought we were capable of. So did you move call centers, uh, admin functions? I guess what exact, what functions had to go remote? Yeah, we tried wherever possible to put work remote. And so we just took a position that said we want everything to move to a work at home environment that can. And so that was the starting point. And so we've moved telesales, customer care, solution specialists, all of our staff functions to a remote environment. Uh, we have uh, functions like information technology, our global technology solutions teams, they're moving to work at home. We also moved uh, a lot of our retail associates. We've right now, to comply with shelter in place and closure orders around the world, we have our retail stores here in the US, 70% of them closed. Um, but the associates that work in those stores, we're enabling them to be able to contact their customers, work through the VZ Verizon application to find ways to give them solutions that they need. And so we really have left uh, not working from home our field technicians that are out keeping the network connected and doing the construction and the support work for that, as well as those uh, visits to small businesses uh, and enterprise and governments and homes that have to be done to keep the homes connected in this crisis. And so we've, we've really taken a position of let's figure out how to do everything at home. And these call centers and these teams that we've enabled to work at home previously were not. And we have been uh, shifting all of our training that we did in person to virtual uh, so that we could deliver on the fly training to people for how to do their job at home. And just this past week, we had 25,000 people that we put through virtual trainings for how to do their roles from home and more to come uh, next week. So I think for us, this has really been a story of what the power of people can do when we all just work together and say, we don't really have a choice. So we're gonna just have to figure this out at speed. And with so many school systems and other care systems um, closing as well, we're you know, asking people to be a lot more patient and flexible. You know, There might be a dog barking in the background. There might be some kids in the home that are now being homeschooled, so to speak, my, myself included. I have four kids and uh, two are home from college, two are home from uh, middle and high school. And I know many families have that throughout the world. So really been uh, a, a flip at speed. What, what were some of the enabling technologies for, for this sort of big move? Like, did you have collaboration tools in place already? I, I guess, how was, you know, were the technologies you had to add to make this move happen or were they all kind of in place? I would say our, uh, our technology support team has been very creative. We had uh, some platforms uh, that were able to be used like we had with our home-based agents, but we couldn't scale that fast enough for the, the tens of thousands of people we had to support. Some of it involved getting uh, laptops and cameras to folks uh, so they could enable uh, online uh, work and support from home. Some of it enabled like certain VPN or other capabilities to come in, Citrix, other ways to get into the network that we've been creative about. Also, we've gone to, even for our frontline folks, home garaging, where instead of coming in every single day to the central office in the garage to get dispatch tickets and uh, tools and, and equipment for the day, we're trying to load those up by week so people can be home-based and do their role from their home uh, every day. Um, we've also for, you know, obviously a lot of video collaboration platforms and we use a number of them. So we've amped that up. And then our um, technology teams are putting out 
communications for folks, uh, learning sessions to like how to work remote, how to do effective video conference calls, how to do effective communications in this new kind of world order for now. And then I think the other thing we've done is really tried to create one source for everybody to go to. So we have, uh, we created a coronavirus webpage that was internal and then we began to put a coronavirus external page on about three weeks ago. We've moved all of the internal and external to be accessible from the external public webpage. And that way, every day we tell our employees it's updated every day, go there, people can find information. And then we have something called Verizon Up to Speed, where every day we do a broadcast for our employees to hear from the CEO and other leaders of his team like myself. And we take questions. We started an Ask Christie box so people can ask me anything they're not getting the answer to. We actually had to close our fitness centers, uh, but our trainers are making videos and put them online for our employees to see how to do some fitness routines. Um, and teams are finding ways uh, to use all those other products and capabilities that they didn't use uh, every day in their work before. What have been, what have been some of the cultural hurdles, or, or I guess what, what are some of the things that have surprised you through that, throughout this? Uh, you know, we had, uh, I think we had some predisposed, we call them like orthodoxies and some of the things we've been doing in our company to find new ways of working over the last year has in our own transformation has been to say, hey, let's identify orthodoxies and let's figure out why we can't uh, change our frame of mind. And I think this move at speed to how do we pivot our organization to support our customers, keep our network up and running, work with each other in a way that's virtual, I think is forcing us to slay a lot of orthodoxies. And so, um, you know, I think like a lot of uh, organizations, we definitely place a high premium on face-to-face -face meetings. We do a lot of travel to be with each other, be with our customers, be out in the uh, market with with uh, businesses and, and products that we provide and support we like to see our customers in person and with a shelter in place order as a way to control and prevent the spread of coronavirus that really you know kind of puts a severe limitation on that and so we've been doing and conducting a lot of business through um, you know oral communication or video communication and finding out it's not um, as bad of a substitute as people might have thought and I think teams are connecting in new ways, personally and professionally. And I think we will continue to place a high premium on when we are able to reconnect uh, physically and be in person with our colleagues or our customers. But uh, we may also, once you don't have something, you realize how much you value it. So it'll probably be a premium. And then this opportunity to allow so many other individuals to do their role remote, uh, we might learn a lot of things out of that too. So I'm kind of excited about um, looking at this as an innovation opportunity uh, versus just a, you know, a, a disruption. It's obviously clearly a disruption. I think we all feel the call to action to help uh, all of our fellow citizens and reduce the spread of coronavirus. And then for us at Verizon, we feel the call to action to keep the networks up. I mean, with so many workers moved to home, so many kids moved to home school, now more than ever, people are calling for bandwidth. We see it in the network uh, utilization and the amount of videos and text messaging and even voice calling. So um, we have this kind of interesting time that we're in. So that's, that's what I would say. We're learning a lot of new things. Yeah, my, my working theory is that this whole this whole move remote is probably going to change a bunch of things into the future. Um, one, I think a lot more people will stay remote. Um, I do wonder things about commercial real estate, you know, things like that. Um, as you watch this unfold, what do you what do you think will stay and what do you think will revert back to the way it was, you know, pre pre COVID? Yeah, that's a great question. I think for us, one of the things that we have been trying to uh, transform inside Verizon up until now uh, was that people could have uh, have leadership roles and functions could be conducted, you know, all over the world in the different markets that we serve. Uh, there had been uh, an emphasis toward having all the leaders co-located the decade preceding. And I think something like this proves out that we could be effective and have teams work cross time zone, cross geography, and stay connected digitally. So I think that's a really good thing because there's a lot of talent and a lot of uh, talent want to you know, be their best and have all the opportunities available to them. So I think it'll create more fluidity 
there, that's a good thing. I think another thing is um, for remote workers, they often have historically, when I do like employee pulse surveys and things like that, they always feel like an afterthought or maybe left out, or maybe, you know, it's, it's, and there's a whole body of research around how do you run distributed teams. So I feel like people are getting that muscle uh, now. I think another thing that's gonna stick is um, the idea that you can do temporary uh, assignments or joblets, I like to call them. So we're about to launch next week, uh, you know, using our internal recruiting platform, the opportunity for managers and employees alike to post, hey, I could use some help for, you know, five hours on this assignment, or I'm building a, a team to do this, and people will be able to access and go, hey, I might have some downtime, I could fill in with that. And so it's going to create uh, almost like an internal labor market for uh, short-term tasks or assignments. Um, and we're so used to like walking down the hall, seeing our teams, rounding up everybody in a room, talking about who has capacity. And now we're going to probably hopefully create a virtual market for that, which I think is, is very exciting and will be very empowering to people. And I think those could be some innovations that come out of this that could be really positive. What, what are some of your management takeaways you know, for yeah, kind of best practices. And I mean, cause everybody's wrestling with managing remote teams and things like that. I guess, what are some of your early takeaways with this big, I you know I call it a big AB test almost. Yeah, I think for folks that haven't ever managed distributed teams uh, or teams cross time zones or teams in a remote environment, you know, people do have to learn to set some boundaries. So that's typically a learning um, so, hey, um, just because I'm working from home, I maybe don't want to be on a 7 a.m. call and an 8 p.m. call. So, I, and that's some of the growing pains that typically multi-time zone distributed team orgs go through or, you know, our Europe teams never appreciate it when we do like all of our team meetings at Friday at four o'clock. That's like their Friday evening. So I think there's some of those typical growing pains for global and remote teams that I think we'll get. I think another is... Um, uh, how do you, you know, for example, I've been trying where we're using video technology in meetings to say, let's everybody go on mute. Let's hear the presenter. Let's use the chat feature so people can add comments and chat throughout and then appoint someone to be the moderator to then ask the presenter the questions that have come in. So the kind of 10, 20 people coming off mute, trying to talk at the same time, not that effective. So I think we're learning some of those, they sound basic, but they can make a meeting be a very, very efficient and, um, and fun for people. And then I think the other thing is we do uh, really like having, and I think it's important for our company, and I think a lot of companies do, we'd like to have the human be a part of the workplace, you know, so it's not just come in and be a worker and complete your task, but there's a whole human element to the workplace. So we're trying to find ways to bring those elements in, you know, maybe at the coffee pot, I would sit and chat with someone and hear how their weekend was or what their kids were up to or how they're personally doing. And so we're trying to create some fun social interactions inside of the workplace as well to add that element of the workplace back in a remote way. So it could be uh, people send us in photos of what you're doing or join the virtual workout or take this trip. Yesterday, people were sending around physical challenges like who could do 10 push-ups and post a picture or send me your furry friends or who's, who's trying to teach their, make their kids do the homeschool and be doing a work meeting. So I think not losing the human element of the workplace but finding a way to do it virtually is it's kind of cool too. Definitely. Um, is there anything I didn't ask that I should have or any, any final words for this big remote move? I, you know, my main message that I would love to just add as a close uh, for any of the viewers uh, is really just patience. And uh, this is a new, new for some people, but, you know, most of the questions I get asked and people, they have my email, they have my cell number, there's an Ask Christy box. I have a team of people in HR helping me uh, respond. We update the web every day. And most of what I experience on those is fear. And people are scared right now. And so I think one of the things we're trying to do uh, for our employees at Verizon is give them a constant set of information we uh, know of to be with the most current on our web page. And then we're just encouraging our coworkers to be patient with each other uh, because stress and anxiety comes out in different ways. And as everybody's flipping to this new normal, um, while also facing what may be um, some personal risks, we're trying to make sure we just all exercise patience with each other. And I would just share that as a personal 
uh, close. Um, and I think this is really where humanity will show itself, where we come together. The only way we'll solve this crisis and reduce the loss of life is by all collectively participating in, uh, in the solution. Okay, thanks for joining us. Thank you so much for having me.